Hi, welcome back. So we finished with uh, this nice looking page here with our dummy thumbnails. And what I want to do now is I will stick to dummy data for now or with seeded data to put it this way, but I want to use the database. I want to introduce MongoDB and actually seed the data there so that the data we're seeing on this page here, on the index page, actually comes from the database and it's not hard coded into well the HTML code. The first step to do this, of course, is to download and install MongoDB. Now, I already got a video on that and you will find a link in the description. Nonetheless, to quickly get you started, the first step is to head over to MongoDB. And there, you simply want to press this download button here and then just choose your operating system and click this download link. Now, if you're on Mac, like I am, then you will have a little package you simply have to extract and then just move the extracted folder somewhere on your machine. If you're running Windows, then you will find an installer for which you run and where you specify where this should be installed. The next step is to open up a terminal or command line and then simply navigate into your MongoDB folder. So where you moved that extracted or installed folder. Once you navigate it into that folder, navigate into the bin in the binary folder, and then you run your MongoDB server by just running dot slash MongoD on Mac or Linux, or on Windows, you may simply double click on it in the Explorer, or just type MongoDB in your command line. And that fires up the MongoDB server, which hosts the database. And of course, we need that server to work with it. So that's the quick installation and in the description of the video you will also find a link to the official manual which detailly describes how to get MongoDB installed and running on different operating systems. So with that out of the way it's time to configure it and to use it in the shopping cart application. In order to do this I'll open up a new terminal and the first thing I will do here is I will install Mongoose. Now Mongoose is basically a Node.js Express package, which makes working with MongoDB very simple. Now we could use the official MongoDB client and that would work fine too, but Mongoose offers a little, some nice extras basically. It allows us to define schemas, it has validation built in, and you can work with the data in a very intuitive way. And this uh, is why I prefer it to the normal MongoDB driver. To install Mongoose, I just run npm install minus minus save to also create an entry in the package.json file and then Mongoose. And this will go ahead and quickly install Mongoose on my machine. And once this is installed, I will head over to my app.js file where the requests are handled, so to say, and I will import Mongoose by simply typing require Mongoose here and I will need to connect my app to the Mongoose server or to the MongoDB server. I do this by using Mongoose and then the connect method. And this connect method expects an input. And the argument we have to pass here is the path of our server. Now in my case, this is of course localhost, then port 27017. And you can find out this port in the console where you started the server. And of course, you have to keep this terminal window open, this, this um, service running. Here, once this started up, you will find this starting info where you will also see the port number. And by default, it's 27017, so 27017. That is why I entered this port here. And then with a slash, I define the database I want to use on this server because that is only the path to the server until now, but the server might hold multiple databases, of course. And I want to use a database called shopping. Now you don't have to create that database. It will be created automatically for you if it doesn't exist yet. So all you do is basically just add slash shopping to use that. Now with this Mongoose is set up or yeah, it's set up and we are connected to MongoDB. However, we also need some way to actually create a seed data, so the data which is in the database. And right now I won't provide a way for the user to create new products or something like this. So how could we do that? We'll have a look at this in the next video. See you there.